Ernest Hemingway, Vincent Van Gogh, Amy Winehouse. The idea of the tortured artist is as old as art itself. But is there a link between mental illness and creativity? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. Plato once said on the subject that he found joy in such pain and to treat it as a gift. Madness, provided it comes as the gift of heaven, is the channel by which we receive the greatest blessings. Madness comes from God, whereas sober sense is merely human. There's no shortage of myths and stories about artists brooding moodily in front of a canvas, musicians turning to the bottle for comfort, or writers ending their own lives. One landmark study by neuroscientist Nancy Andreasen in 1987 showed a link between creativity and mental illness. Her research found that of the 30 writers she interviewed, most 80% had been hospitalized for some mood disorder like bipolar or depression. Some studies find a higher incidence of mental disorders in those in creative fields, and especially in those individuals who've reached some notoriety or eminence. Maybe it's not just genetic, but neurological too. Some studies show that the brain acts in similar ways when being creative and when mentally ill. One study published in the journal NeuroImage found that a center of the brain, the precuneus, that is normally deactivated when thinking, remains active when creative people are thinking creatively. Using MRI techniques, they found that the precuneus is typically deactivated when focusing on cognitive tasks, but those that were unable to suppress this part of the brain had more original ideas. Basically, when you're trying to focus on something, you tune out everything around you, but not creative people. According to one study published in the journal Cognitive, Effective, and Behavioral Neuroscience, more creative people may include many more events and stimuli in their mental processes than do less creative people. But how does mental illness mean more creative thoughts? Well, maybe it has to do with free association, which can be defined as the spontaneous and undirected association of ideas, emotions, and feelings. Sometimes free association in the unconscious mind could lead to strange and bizarre links, which isn't always a bad thing. This very process can spark novel ideas. Einstein called it combinatory play, like coming up with a new formula of gravity or a great metaphor. But sometimes the ideas are a little too far out there and can delve into the truly delusional. Famous mathematical genius John Nash said, the ideas I have about supernatural beings came to me the same way that my mathematical ideas did, so I took them seriously. It's almost like creativity and madness are on a kind of spectrum, with creativity somewhere in the middle and delusion and madness on the other end. While considering more possibilities certainly leads to greater creativity, so does dwelling on a single problem. One of the hallmarks of depression is neurotic thinking. Neurotic thinking can be focusing on negative thoughts and feelings and constantly ruminating on things past. But this rehashing can have an upside. According to a study published in the journal Trends in Cognitive Sciences, rumination means focusing on a problem for longer than most people would. By dwelling on the same problems, sometimes single-mindedly, these types of people would eventually come up with an interesting solution. And it's not just the pursuit of a single problem, but neurotic people might be more creative too, mostly because neurotic people are highly anxious. You know, in preparation for a threat, they literally imagine the worst. This penchant for dramatic imaginings might help creative people imagine solutions most people wouldn't. So have you ever experienced a spark of genius? Tell us about it down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back to D News. We've got new episodes every day of the week.